Nvidia basically just told us the performance of a 6090 and no one noticed. Hopper is 1X, Blackwell 68X, Ruben is 900X. Scale up flops. 5070. 4090 performance at 549. Oh, let's go, that's class! Impossible without artificial intelligence. Impossible without the four tops, four teraops of AI tensor cores. Boys, let's talk. So NVIDIA just had a roadmap where they came out and said, this is what we're doing for the next few years, all the way up to 2028. Look at it, deal with it, and now invest in our AI madness. And well, at first this came out and I was like, cool, NVIDIA's just doing more AI stuff, nothing really to see here. Didn't think about it. And then, you know, I started talking about more and more of the 6080 is gonna match a 5090, performance of next generation GPUs, and well, I didn't really think about it, but I based that on the assumption that next generation GPUs are built on TSMC 2 nanometer. And well, <laughs> Nvidia just confirmed that that's false. That's not gonna happen. Just going right into the meat of this video. Ruben, Nvidia's next generation of data center GPUs scheduled for 2026 or next year, it's coming out on TSMC 3NP, not TSMC 2 nanometer. And this is a big deal, guys, because, well, this is going to drop the performance estimates for the 60 series quite a bit. And I don't know, that MSRP 5090 didn't look like such a bad deal now, now did it? So just talking about the roadmap real quick, let's gloss over that. Ruben in 2026, built on TSMC 3 nanometer. This is similar to Bat Blackwell in its design. I believe I didn't pay too much attention. I'll throw the pictures on screen. But Ruben, I believe, is a two full-size GPU configuration on a silicon interconnect or interposer, whatever you, whatever have you. And this is gonna be crazy. You know, I think they said 3X the AI performance in FP4, or maybe that's Ruben Ultra. And then Ruben Ultra, instead of having those two compute dies, it's going to have four, just bringing up things to 11 in 2027, rhymed there. And then in 2028, all the way in 2028, years away from now, we get Fenniman, which is NVIDIA's next, next, next GPU architecture built on two nanometer. That's when we're getting two nanometer, all the way in 2028, like what? Now, this is all speculation, of course, but um, I don't know if NVIDIA confirmed TSMC3 for, uh, what is it called, Ruben, but it is all making sense to me now, guys. Let me explain, right? TSMC 2 nanometer, it's not ready yet. It's going to be ready next year, and, well, just think about every other node TSMC has came out with, right? Apple gets it first, basically for the whole first year. Apple gets the new node. Now, that's not the case with TSMC 2 nanometer, and that's why I thought, you know, doesn't it make sense? NVIDIA is a big company, they get it. But no, and it makes sense why NVIDIA wouldn't get this node because, well, when a node first comes out, the die, uh, the um, defect rates are a lot higher, right? And NVIDIA makes these huge, absolutely massive, like 800, 900 millimeter square dies, and well, it just doesn't make sense for NVIDIA to spend so much money on a new node and it have huge defect rates when their yields aren't really worked out, right? And that's why it's great for Apple because they make these small little chips, they need to be uh, power efficient, they need to be performant, and well, Apple can deal with the lower yields much easier than Nvidia could. And overall, the price of performance for such a large die would probably be uh, like exponentially greater than it's worth. But for us gamers, that just, <laughs> that means it's not gonna be a lot of performance. So yeah, I thought about that. I'm like, yeah, so it makes sense. TSMC 3 nanometer has been out for what, a year, two years now? Apparently they're going to be using TSMC 3NP, which is like the performance um, version of it. I think it adds like 5% more performance or something like that. But I don't know guys, if we're getting this next generation Ruben architecture RTX 6000 series next year in the fall, that's gonna be kinda of soon, maybe next year in January. But still, if we're getting it, it's gonna be built on TSMC N3P because, well, TSMC 2 nanometer will just be rolling out. The yields probably won't be good enough for an 800 millimeter square die um, for NVIDIA, right? And it makes sense. See, that all makes sense to me now. But we gotta talk because my last performance estimates 
of you know 60% more performance for the 6090 for the 6080 well it's kind of bogus now it's not gonna work out exactly that way so we got to talk so TSMC 5 nanometer to TSMC 3 NE is going to have 18% more performance and 30% more chip density so hey not a bad jump not a bad jump at all and like we talked about before, from N3E to N2, it's 15% more performance and 15% more density. So, hey, the bigger jump is actually from 5 to N3E. And like I said, they aren't going to N3E, they're going to N3P, which is even better. So, honestly, we're probably getting close to 20% more performance and 30% more density with this jump. At the same time, though, I'm comparing N5 and not N4N which is the node actually these chips are built on. So I say keep it at 18% and 30% more density. If we multiply those figures together, well, 18% times 30%, we get 53%. Hey, not bad for a, a new generation of GPUs, right? 53%, well, guys, you have to understand, like I explained in my last video, this does not scale, never. It's never gonna scale linearly with the amount of transistors you get. Cache doesn't scale, you know, uh, things like CUDA cores don't always scale. So honestly, guys, I think we're probably looking, if I had to be conservative, anywhere from 30 to 40% gains, right? Probably 35, let's just say 35 would be conservative. 35% more gains, basically what we got from the 4090 to the 5090 if you max it out at 4K. So it is a jump, it is something, but with the increased costs of N3P and inflation rising and tariffs, I mean, is NVIDIA gonna be able to give us at least 30% more price to performance with this? Like is a 6070 gonna be 550 just like the 5070 was or is it gonna be 650? And I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to look at all the numbers again, guys, but this isn't that big of a jump, and well, I think it's gonna leave a sour taste in a lot of gamers' mouths. So with the 35% jump in performance, you know, 50, the 6090 will be 35% faster than the 5090. There's nothing really to compare it to there. It'll be faster than the uh, A6000, $9,000 GPU. Cool, whatever. It's probably gonna cost at least 30% more, definitely on the street. And then the 6080, won't even be able to catch up to the 5090 if this is the case. If they built these GPUs on TSMC 3NP, they keep the same die sizes, bus widths, things like that. Yeah, um, 6080 won't even beat the 5090. It's sad, it, it will, will beat the 4090 by like 15%. Um, <laughs> But at that point, that's kind of sad, dude. If you bought a 4090 on launch, you were sitting pretty for the next couple of generations for sure. With this configuration on TSMC N3P, we get a 6070 Ti around the performance of a 4090. Well, finally, this 70 Ti class after two generations reached 90 level performance. Not too good if you ask me, not too good at all. And then the 6070, sadly, would not even reach 5080 performance. We're looking closer to a 4080 Super towards a 5080, maybe if you overclock at 5080. But so far, these numbers are kind of getting depressing for me, especially if prices also increase, guys. Do you like my jacket? And then a 6060 would be on the performance of a 4070 RTX 3080. And that one's okay. I guess if you could keep that at $300 for RTX 3080 performance, I mean, you can already buy 3080s for that. So still not that impressive, guys, I gotta say. Now, guys, remember, this is all if NVIDIA keeps the die sizes the same. If they <laughs> decide to cut the die sizes again and screw us over, I mean, they could basically just give us 10% on a new node once again while keeping prices, I guess, the same, but like shrinkflation, you know? And this is something I had to talk about. Like, even going to a new node, do they want to give the 6090 a 512-bit bus, go all the way balls out on this first generation? Like, do they really want to do that with this new node? Because with the four nanometer node, they gave us a 384-bit with the 4090, and they're like, okay, yeah, that's pretty darn good GPU. And then to give more longevity out of that node, they gave us an even bigger die with 512-bit. And 
things could happen. We could be stuck on three nanometer for a while. And NVIDIA's data center plans, right, they have they have this Ruben in 2026 and then in 2027, they have Ruben Ultra. So they could give us some sort of refresh on the same note again and hold that 512 bit in their back pocket. And in that case, if NVIDIA gives us a new GPU, right, that's 384 bit, that is the 90 class. Well, it's only gonna be 10% faster at best than a 5090 or stay at 5090 performance. I would probably guess 10%. They'd probably be able to push the clock speeds a little bit. But at that point, I mean, <laughs> you give us a GPU and with three gigabyte modules, maybe they could make it 32 gigs. It's only 10% faster on a new node. That's not looking good. So I think they're gonna have to make it 512 bit if they go to TSMC 3NP uh, for that 90 class. And if they don't, then us 5090 buyers just hey, we got a good deal, right? It's all cope. <laughs> now the rest of the GPUs, I think they definitely wouldn't cut. I think if they cut the rest of them, that would be a huge mistake. I mean, <laughs> we're at like 380 millimeters squared for the 80 class right now. How much lower do you really wanna go? And if you went lower there, um, I don't think you'd have any buyers to be honest. I think people would just buy last gen. Now, of course, they're probably gonna come out with some AI based or software based a feature for this generation that's exclusive that you're gonna to wanna to get. Um, in NVIDIA's presentation, they showed that this Ruben architecture has like three times more FP4 performance. And I don't know if that's for regular Ruben or Ruben Ultra. And obviously that's data center, it's not apples to oranges, but you know, with all that AI power, you can bet NVIDIA is gonna use it. They actually like to use and make software for the hardware they develop, right? Honestly, I could see them even buffing the 80 class, the 6080 be more like a 450 millimeter squared die or 400 square millimeter squared die. Uh, something a little bit bigger, probably like 450. Uh, I think they'd go up a little bit on that and uh, give it maybe, I would like to see the reintroduction of a 320 bit bus. I think that's what the 3080 had. I guess it was cut down from the 3090. If they gave the 6080 um, a 320 bit bus and it was just cut down from whatever the 6090 was if they go 384 bit. That'd be pretty cool. I think most people would like that better than them going all out with the 6090, 512 bit right off the rip and then separating the high and low end like with such a huge gap. Um, basically, I think if they just pulled another amp here, made the 80 class really close to the 90 class, um, it could be a successful generation if they did that. Now they do this whole thing where all the die sizes are still the same and the 90 class is only 384 bit. I mean, we're basically looking at an architecture that's just giving us 30% across the board, except the 90 class is just gonna be like 10% faster. And at that point, I'm out, I'm not interested. It's good, it's great, but it's not as big as a jump as from five or four nanometer to two nanometer. And that would have been amazing, but We'll have to see what NVIDIA does. I really don't think they're gonna come out with these monstrous uh, large die GPUs on a new node. That was kind of wishful thinking on my part. I think it's gonna be three nanometer and we're gonna have to wait a whole nother two years to get to two nanometer um, on, on GPU hardware. Now, when it comes to two nanometer on CPUs, it's already gonna happen on uh, Zen 6. Are we on Zen 6? Yeah, it's gonna happen on Zen 6 and also on Nova Lake because, well, CPUs are much smaller in die size. It makes more sense with yield rates and all that on a new CPU architecture to go with a new node. So we'll, we'll get to see two nanometer in action. We'll have an idea of what it's capable of for sure. And that can help us temper our expectations for the 70 series. But let's hope the 70 series isn't a refresh on uh, three nanometer. That'd be kind of crazy. 60 series. 35% performance across the board. What do you think? Is that enough for you to upgrade? What if they throw in an AI girlfriend with it? Would you upgrade then? For me, I'm on a 90 class. If they don't give that uh, next 90 class a 512 bit bus, I mean, I'm pretty much tuned out of next generation at that point. Even with all the features they're gonna add, I'm probably just gonna be fine with my 5090. It's, it's, it's just an absolute beast. I knew when I saw the 512 bit bus on that card, it was going to age like fine wine. And I think, uh, well, <laughs> I think it is. I, I think it's going to be the 1080 Ti. Well, not in the price aspect, but in the longevity aspect of GPUs for quite a while. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I am not as excited for next generation GPUs at this point, but the whole thing where in my last video where 6070 was gonna be on 4090 performance, 
it was a fairy tale. It was going to be a great thing, but honestly, I don't know if it's going to happen anymore unless Nvidia gets real generous. But yeah, let me know what you think, guys. I had fun estimating this performance. At the end of the day, it's just estimates. It's just my thoughts. And well, we could get more performance than this or even less. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Silicon State. The master of tech. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs. He knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his take, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon State's truth cuts through the line.